Schnittel Wiggler. Seriously, Schnittle Wiggler. Schnittel meaning small. We all know what wiggle means. I don't even bother with that. All right, first things first. We're gonna do this. Essentially, is a very small. Wait, 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 wait. What? What's the deal with this fly? What's it for? Striped bass, marlin. Oh, this is striped uh, bass. Wait, <laughs> Schnittel Wiggler. Um, you know, it's it's summer. We're talking small. We're talking small wigglers. It would. It would work for striped bass. I bet you a marlin would eat it. It'd be maybe too small. Um, it would definitely work for largemouth bass, summer run steelhead, winter run steelhead, maybe. If the water was low and clear. Um, yeah, I'd fish this thing on the Deschutes, although some pro people probably laugh at me. But yeah, we're going, we're going truly small. Nice and small, thin silhouette. I'm gonna show you how to do composite loops in the micro version. And what we're starting with is our 30, three millimeter shank. Some, is that what it is? Two. 32? Uh, well, I Last thought time it. time you said one. <laughs> 31, okay, yeah. It, they're 32 millimeter? Yeah. 31, 32, same caliber. Yes, one millimeter. Okay, anyway, the loop, in this case, I'm just making roughly as long as the shank because this is going to be a small fly. And it's still, when it's finished, be probably an inch and three quarters. And that's not too bad. Okay, and of course, I could, you could choose to do this unweighted, but I'm not an unweighted fly fan. I'll just adjust sink tip weight and always fish. A weighted fly. So I'm going with a small copper bead or brass bead, excuse me. I'm having a real good time getting it on here. Pull everything forward. Set in our tool. So what were you doing there for those who may not familiar? As far, oh, as far as setting this up? Yeah. Oh, that's, I'm sorry, dude. Sorry. The, um, well, the concept here is, is to take and double that over through the, eye, the hook. <clears throat> As you can see, there's the closed loop end and the tag loop end. Slide the bead up over the whole assembly allows you to have a stress-free loop. You know for a fact that if you catch a five pound summer run, it's gonna hold just fine. And if you accidentally hook a summer king, it's not gonna straighten out or you snag it and it just pulls the hook loop straight off. And the reason for, that's why I like to double them over and that's how I do it. Okay, so have them separated. I stick it all the way in our OPST chuck tool here. Coming soon, tighten it down. Pull those two apart. And I'm using some 210 denier, it's Danville. And I go with a minimum of 210, it's just the, it's the ideal diameter and breaking strength, which is very little. <laughs> I don't want these loops to bust. So I'm just using as much of the shank here as I want to. You don't need to use the whole shank. And basically I'm using roughly about a half inch from the back of the bead is where the loop will be tied down. And making the loop oh, roughly about an inch and a quarter long. So this up, push it forward. The tag ends, tie them down. Go back halfway, cut them off. Go back to the tie down point. And this is where we'll tie in the tail. It's important that you go back to the tie down point of the loop. The tail and the loop need to be tied down in the exact same spot so one doesn't limit the other in swing. 
And in this case, for the Schnittel Wiggler, we're using Pine Squirrel. Pine Squirrel, a lot of the time with most rabbit strips, these are rabbit strips I've split with a razor blade. Just regular, standard, barred rabbit strips. I split them with a razor blade. But I also pick through them, and I pick through them to check for the length of the hair. In this case, this single strip happens to have transitional hair, which I thought was really cool, so I bought it. And I knew if I stripped it, I could make these flies that went from super skinny hair to longer hair. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that sometimes you have, that is really hard to make a summer fly out of rabbit hair that long. So I've discovered through my good friend, Kevin Harris, this pine squirrel. It's super short, super short, really, really thin flesh, just ideal for tying summer size flies. And then of course, if you prescribe to my method of splitting strips, you always end up with these ideal super skinnies. These super skinnies are what I end up using for summer flies, for the schnittle wigglers. And I just save them up. Nice thin, thin flesh, short, short hair, ideal for summer stuff. But today we're using black. We're gonna go with something that the, maybe my Deschutes brothers would approve of for swinging on the Discahooties. Okay. So to start these, I always cut this square. It just gives you a really good platform. Pull a little bit of hair off the front and tie it down in. Start with a pinch wrap, right? pull it fingers, pinch it up between your fingers, pull it down right on top of where you want. Okay, so we're gonna cut this off. Now I would, I would like to cut these off right away and the reason why is proportion. It's important that I understand the total proportion of the fly, especially when I'm going small. And all I'm doing is cutting this wing off about an eighth of an inch past the end of the loop. Because in reality, those scissors are toast. In reality, it ends up, if you cut the loop, and the wing, or the rabbit, the exact same length, it'll work out perfect. But that's a little bit harder to work with, so I always make sure that the rabbit's a little longer to start with, and then I can trim off a little tiny bit once I do the twisted hitch. So there's our wing. <coughs> nice, skinny little black wing. Okay. I'm gonna start with a little dubbing loop here for the back shoulder. Little dubbing wax. We'll pin this back. And what I'm going to use in this case is a little bit of lavender ice dub. <clears throat> I really like the lavender, it's kinky and stiff. And I'm breaking this really short. I'm gonna set it right here on my center line. So I'm going, oh. And then a little bit of this purple, purple angel hair, nice. Okay. And that's a fairly small amount. Now I'm gonna take all these straggler extra longs out. Just look at it in the light, see what I got. I'm gonna spread it out in my fingers. Got a nice little spread. Stick it on top of that. I'm gonna wee bit more of the purple over the top this into this dubbing loop. That's what you got. A little bit of lavender, a little bit of purple. We want to actually spread this out a little bit better. 
use our bodkin with our finger as a backbone and just poke through. Spread it out the way you want it. Let's give this a spin. This is going to be our first shoulder. <clears throat> nice, and spun out. Now I'm pulling it tight when I do this. I've actually braced my hand against my vise. Got a nice purchase on my tool. That's why I like this bigger tool. It's something to hold on to. Just give this a good picking. Make sure you're down to the thread. <coughs> okay, there you go. Use a little bit of water, fold it back, give it a pinch. Fold it back, give it a pinch. There you go. Let's wrap this in right over where we tied in the rabbit strip wing. It's exactly two in turns. Tie this off. Cut. All right. Excuse me. Give that a couple more wraps. Toothbrush. Set it all free. And then back. And notice how minimal that actually is. Very minimal, very sparse. It's got some good presence, however. It'll make a really nice back shoulder. Okay. And I've been using these wee jungle cock eyes because this is all I have left. Take any two because we're going schnittle. And these aren't even the exact same size, which is fine. I'm going to put them perfectly on the flank, tied in just by the stem, a very, very little butt end. And how I do that is I usually take and just, I find where I want the butt to be and then I pin it down with this side so I can get a couple wraps on it. And then once I get a couple wraps on it, they're set where I want them to be, make sure they're fixed, and then I can give them a little yard and pull them out. And as you can see, they're tented on the flanks perfectly down the sides. <coughs> okay. Now we want a little bit of purple ostrich. I'm going to use a piece of this purple OPST bard in this case. And I chose this tip because of how fine it was. Again, we're going schnittle here, so I want very little materials. Incorporating a really good wiggle. Okay, four nice thin tips. Tight in just above your jungle cock. And I time in about as long as the loop, and then I usually give them a little pull. It makes them about a quarter inch shorter and gives them kind of a very nice natural spread. One more wrap to hold it, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm actually going to take these off the same side. Another four. <coughs> and it, you don't have to be that critical. You could put six or eight or whatever, one or four. It wouldn't matter, but I like a little balance. <clears throat> natural spread. One more. Suspend. Time off. All right. So there we are. Ostrich. Now, <clears throat> on the dirty hoe we'd put some flash in right now. Or even on a skinny hoe I would too. But because we're going summer schnittle, 
and all the materials have some element of flash, I think it's more than enough. We're just going to go with the forward, the front hackle, the front composite loop. And that will consist of lavender again, lavender ice tub, UV ice tub. Pull a little pinch out. And I want to show you how I pull this apart. I just usually grab a nice little pinch of it and then I break it, snap it apart. You can see how it broke almost perfectly straight down the side. It's ideal. So it's half as long right off the bat. So I'm going to take this and now I'm just going to spread it out a little. Set it on here. I basically start with about an inch, inch worth of material, try to get the tips fairly close to each other. Get out of the way, don't need you yet. Okay. So we have our lavender. I also want to use the Senyo Predator Wrap. This is it in its entirety. It comes on a braid. It's all synthetic. It's UV. It's all very metallic, as you can see. I love the material. It's a very substantial shoulder addition in a composite loop with very minimal amount of material. It's absolutely incredible. And really the reason that it's so cool is the fact that the fibers are lots of little individual fibers, except for the metallic. I believe, and it'll continually fall apart and become more confused, making the shoulder even better over time instead of compressed over time. Okay, so I basically cut about an inch. Now I'm spreading it out in my fingers, flare it out, and set it on the pile. And I set that on there about 60-40. 60-40 on my center line. Oops, straggler. Just put it right back in. And it doesn't matter if these are offset. Just as orderly as you'd like it to be. Okay. So we have the ice tub, the predator wrap cut to one inch. And now we want some ostrich. Ostrich for the forward hackle barred. I'm going to go spotted. And what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to show you how I like to use and how you can use the longer material in a shorter case. And I'm going to use a fair amount of it here too and show you how to minimize that. I'm just going to take all of this off of this side. And the reason this will work, just as a disclaimer, is you'll notice that the fibers on this ostrich are very fine. This is a thin fiber, very thin. So it makes it possible to use an extreme amount of it in a very small loop. So if you went to a fatter fiber, it wouldn't be quite the effect. It would probably be a little bit too condensed and there would be very little movement or transparency. Okay, so that's a fair amount of material. We're gonna check for length. And this is schnittel, so we want it to be small. We're gonna go even smaller than that. So it'll be about there because about a third of that will get consumed in the dubbing loop. So having pinched it together, we're going to cut it off. And then go to the tips. And really you can just pull it open with your fingers. It splays out beautifully. And I lay it on there with just about an eighth inch overlap. And it can be adjusted a little bit in the dubbing loop. Actually quite a bit in the dubbing loop. Okay, so it's all stacked on there together. We want just a little bit more lavender. Finish off this composite loop. And notice I didn't break that, I just pulled it out and made a very thin, thin scrim to go over the top of the ostrich. And again, less is more in this. It doesn't take a lot of material to make a very substantial, very obvious loop. Okay, let's make ourselves a dubbing loop. Doesn't need to be very long, probably about five inches, two around the top. Two wraps are, whoa, 
two wraps around the shank, let's draw my thread, two around the base, back up, oh, let's just run all of this forward. And those base wraps are real important to keep the bottom of the loop closed. The bottom of the loop closed, you can put your middle finger in and control the loop with your index and your thumb very easily. Open it, close it, open it, close it. It's really easy. A little bit of dubbing wax. And then just pick our loop up. Put it right up in the dubbing loop. And you can notice the overlaps. They're all different. The Senyo is basically a shoulder, a big shock absorber back there, split far enough apart to where every wrap you end up with two layers, two different lengths that support each other, and the ostrich is on the very top, the longest of them all. Okay, so I'm going to put the tool in the bottom, but at this point, if you wanted to, you could spread this out. And the important part about this is, is that it's making enough, making your dubbing loop long enough to fill in the space required and not too long to waste it. And I usually find the recipe is that the loop needs to be roughly three times longer than the space you have in front of you. Three to four based on how tight your dubbing loops can be. Nice solid spin, couple runs with the bodkin, and there you go. Nice clean, short little loop. I didn't even have to brush that out. The materials were so minimal. What I will do again is a little bit of water. Moisture is important. Moisture helps. This parting operation is really important, I think. It helps assure that everything is in place and it allows you to wrap nice clean wraps in front of each other and it also strengthens the loop and you get a surprise when everything dries out okay so we'll just start wrapping forward they don't have to be too tight but just right in front of each other fill the space up Right up to the head here, right behind the bead. A couple wraps, a couple more. Cut this off. Whip finish. Two more. Okay. Cut this off. Let's pick this out. And I'm gentle at first. I want to get underneath and just get everything out. And I don't dig at it too hard. But I get right down in there. Pick it all out, work my way around it one or two times. Pick it in out. And it doesn't take much when there's very little materials like this. Okay, and then the last little part of this party, let's be mean to it. Give it a good brushing forward. Hmm. Notice how those jungle cock are boing. Maybe stay right where they need to be. Let's brush this back now. Now, just if that was just hackle, that would not be that natural tear shape when it got wet. It would be really, really flat. It's the predator wrap that gives everything enough support without all the bulk for it to be full and swimmy and transparent. Without it, it wouldn't have that. And I know it for a fact because of all the materials I've used throughout my entire life, the only thing that does this, this good, is Polar Bear and Seal and we do not have an access to polar bear and seal, and it'd sure be cool to not have to whack polar bears and seals to type bitchin' flies. <laughs> and when you can do it with synthetic materials, I feel pretty darn good about that.
And I didn't, I've never seen a UV polar bear yet, so, or a UV seal. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that's a good schnittily little hackle with lots of substance, lots of color. And as it dries out here, it becomes even better. You get a real perspective. Let's take this thing out of the vise. <sighs> okay, so going the other way, the first thing I do after I rig these, and I'm not going to do it right now, but after I'd rig it, is I'll cut this extra hook off. This extra hook is, it, it, it actually can tangle the tail and it helps, it makes the fly sink a lot flatter where I want all the weight forward on the dirty hose so the fly is free to swing and swim. All the weight forward makes for a pretty erratic movement. This longer shank makes for a less erratic movement. So I will cut this shorter. And all I'm doing is taking the whole party, pulling it forward. And I leave a little bit, usually about a quarter of an inch, because I don't want anything to run off the back, if not like it ever would. Take my retired file. And knock the sharp edges off here. You can't tell me that wouldn't crush on the discahooties, dude. We, we need to go there. <laughs> um, okay, um, hook. Size four barbless. Grab by the head, grab by the loop. Pull everything back. And I'm, I'm super aggro about this. So I just get everything out of the way. And get the loop, make sure it's flat and parallel, not twisted. And then I'm holding it with the wing facing me. And I'm going down through the eye of the hook. And if you want the hook to ride down, go the opposite direction than I am. I'm making the hook ride up. Okay, open the loop up, go over the hook, twist it to the right, go down over it, twist it to the left, come back up over the top. Now you have three twists on there with the loop up, put the, hook, the wing through the loop. I pinch that between my fingers. I grab that between my thumb and index finger, grab the eye of the hook, and I just slowly slide back. Now it's gonna to wanna to twist a little bit, but that's okay, because this is a tiny little fly. I just push it back under and kind of slightly secure it, because as you can see, there's a fair amount of trapped hair. We're just gonna pick this out. Secure it down again. It's still all wet. And if you use a 30 pound braid, this little knot back here becomes less substantial. I'm not worried about it because I kind of like the separation in material. But there you go. It's all hood rigged up. Now let's give it a good little brush out here. Make sure that proportionally it's right, in which it is. It's right inside the bend of the hook. So no extra needs to be cut off of here. And there you go. So schnittle I can barely hold it in my fingers. Little schnittle wiggler at a grand total of, let's see, what's the big number? Oh, two and a half inches. That was bread and butter on the Grand Run. 
Shinero Eclair.